to the US, where former US President Donald Trump is, quite predictably, once again in the headlines. This time for calling Joe Biden's approach to the war in Ukraine stupid. Mr Trump calls for peace and negotiation to put an end to what he calls a threat of World War III. And now we have a war between Russia and Ukraine with potentially hundreds of thousands of people dying. We must demand immediate negotiation of a peaceful end to the war in Ukraine, or we will end up in World War III and there will never be a war like this. We will never have had a war like this, and that's all because of stupid people that don't have a clue. And it's also because of the kind of weaponry that's available today. You, we never had weapons like this, the destructive capability of weapons, modern weapons. I know more about it than anybody because of the fact that I rebuilt our military. Donald Trump making those comments whilst addressing a rally in Arizona. It's not the first time that he's spoken about a possible threat of another world war. Over the weekend, while speaking to a US broadcaster, he claimed that Joe Biden was saying the wrong thing to Russia in reference to the prospect of Armageddon, a remark made by the US president earlier this week in relation to Russian President Vladimir Putin's threats to use nuclear weapons. US officials did later issue a clarification on that, saying there are no signs that Russia is preparing for an imminent nuclear attack, also reiterating that America's military has not changed its nuclear posture. For more on all this, let's cross to our correspondent, Susan Tavani, who joins us live from New York. Uh, Susan, on this issue, and I guess many others too, Donald Trump continuing to be a, a thorn in Joe Biden's side. Right. Well, yes. On the one hand, uh, Donald Trump decided to criticize Joe Biden uh, on the comments that he made uh, regarding Russia uh, and, 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 you know, a possible Armageddon, uh, which was really not only criticized by the former U.S. president, but by former military officials, also during the weekend by Mike Pompeo uh, as well, for being reckless and being beyond a cocktail party uh, chatter because the uh, U.S. President Joe Biden made those comments at a campaign fundraising a gathering event here in Manhattan. And, and Donald Trump's point uh, was that basically, and this is something that uh, many others are saying, uh, was that if there is a nuclear threat uh, and it, an Armageddon is coming, then uh, it must go beyond, uh, you know, a, a chatter like that. Uh, on the one hand, and yes, you know, he went as, and that's the way that uh, Donald Trump speaks. You know, he's, this is not the first time that he's called uh, Joe Biden stupid. I could count two other times. Once was when Joe Biden and Kamala Harris undermined the effective, effectiveness of the COVID vaccine because it was made under the Trump presidency. And the second time was when, um, uh, he said that uh, uh, the Biden administration is quote unquote stupid for letting uh, China and Russia negotiate the Iran nuclear deal. But that's uh, one side of it. But the other side is, yes, he continues to um, uh, criticize uh, the Biden administration. But I think the more bigger uh, topic right now here uh, is why uh, the president decided to make these comments in such a casual setting and why uh, there is not more. Con there isn't a bigger conversation about U.S. deterrence, and, and why you know uh, we're not having a bigger conversation about how the United States should be re uh, responding to such an issue. You know, this goes beyond the fact of sort of those comments made by Joe Biden on Taiwan, where it says you know the U.S. would go to the defense of Taiwan, and the White House sort of walking it back. This is a lot bigger than that. If it is a threat, really, uh, then Congress should get involved. The American people should know more about it. Uh, and I think that's something that the former U.S. president was talking about. And as I said, you know, it wasn't just Donald Trump. It was backed by uh, generals and it was also backed by Mike Pompeo during the weekend uh, as well. But I think it made headlines because, again, it was Donald Trump and it was the language that he uses. And just on Donald Trump, very briefly, of course, he's been attending a number of rallies in the lead up to the midterms. I mean, what's he been saying at, at these several events, uh, peddling, I, I'm sure, some of his unsubstantiated claims about losing his election to Joe Biden? 
Yeah, you know, he continues to do that. And it's unfortunate because that is Donald Trump is at the end of the day, his worst enemy at a time of when, you know, he's backing these candidates uh, that are sometimes doing uh, pretty well in elections. And many might say that this is one of the biggest uh, and most consequential elections. Uh, and, and I know Americans always say that. Uh, but in recent times, uh, you know, he goes out and rallies for these candidates and then he makes those unsubstantiated claims, as you mentioned, and, uh, you know, people don't take him seriously. But for the most part, uh, the election issue on the one side where he continues to say that he did win 2020, uh, on the other hand, you see some of his candidates are doing pretty well. You know, because of the problems that the country is having. Susan, thank you so much for that update. Susan Tirani joining us live from New York, and I'm sure we'll keep a close eye on uh, Donald Trump's movements and many of the other rallies uh, as the country prepares itself for that vote uh, for the midterms in November. Mm -hmm.